Well, hello, and welcome to another episode of Let's Play Slay. But tonight we're not going to be playing Slay. As I said, I thought we might try and branch out and do some new episodes. Uh, so we're actually be doing a little Nintendo Switch tonight. Uh, I've enjoyed the time I've spent with the Switch so far. I am a Nintendo fan. Uh, a bunch of the Nintendo uh, franchise games so far that I've played, I've thoroughly enjoyed. But the one I wanted to show you tonight is one on the eShop that I don't know if it's getting a lot of recognition or not. It's called Tactical Mind. So we'll open this up and you'll see, um, if I bring us back into the main menu here, um, it is a grid-based game, very similar in uh, terms of layout to uh, you know, sw uh, Slay in that it is a turn-based game. Um, I have been playing mostly just single player so far, although there is a multiplayer component to it, so you could have two people sitting here playing together as if it were a board game. We're going to go ahead and do a single player game tonight. Now, so far I've just been playing on easy to get a feel for the game, and that's what we'll do tonight so I can kind of show you what the game looks like. But um, uh, I did play one level on normal earlier today and uh, got my rear end totally handed to me. So. There's a bunch of different grids that you can play, kind of like the different islands on Slay. We'll go ahead and go to this next one that I haven't quite played just yet. But the basic idea is it's um, similar to Slay. It's a territory, territory control game where you will uh, try and control this territory. But your ultimate objective, unlike Slay where you're trying to get to the whole map, your ultimate objective is to get to um, uh, the other enemy's base and destroy that base. So that's gonna be our primary objective here. And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna build some pawns. Now the one really cool um, mechanic about this game that I'm really enjoying is this uh, way that you actually, um, the various uh, actions that you can take in your turn cost a certain amount of energy. You get energy by having pawns near these crystals. And uh, what I'm doing is building, and I can't even build right now, I'm all energy, but um, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna build a pawn right here, and it's gonna cost me four energy. And you'll note that now it has gone up to five. So this grid down here in the lower left uh, has five different options. So if I choose this pawn and I want him to do some actions, I've got five options. I can either build a new pawn, I can upgrade a pawn, I can attack a neighboring pawn, disable a neighboring pawn, or move the current pawn. Now some of these are just not going to be available for various reasons, uh, and each of these has a different number with a lightning bolt next to it, and that's how much energy it's going to cost for me to actually perform this action. So what I'm actually going to do is upgrade that pawn right there like that, and then that's going to be into my turn. Now on the upper left you see the player has got seven energy. And currently, if he passes on his turn, he's going to get eight extra energy added to his inventory, and that can continue to, to grow and grow and grow. Now, what I find very interesting about this game and the mechanic I enjoy is that every time I perform one of these actions, the cost goes up. Uh, and that is true for both players. So if both players are um, upgrading a lot or building new pawns a lot, that gets expensive. Currently, nobody is attacking anybody. And that is very inexpensive. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna throw things for a loop for him a little bit. I'm gonna go ahead and attack, go on the offensive a little bit there. And then I'm in addition to that, I am really looking to upgrade all the way. So I'm gonna upgrade this pawn a little bit. Now I'm not a lot of energy, but we move on. And you can see he's starting to upgrade also. So again, the objective here is to get your um, uh, excuse me, attack the enemy base. And that's all you have to do is just attack it once. So obviously defending your base is going to be very, very important. And we'll go ahead and upgrade again here. And then I'm just going to hoard my energy because upgrading right now is the only thing I'm interested in. And he has gone on the offensive as well. So I want to continue to upgrade. So I'm going to upgrade right here. Now I'm going to attack by building a pawn up here and making sure that he's going to have a hard time doing that to me up here again. Yeah, by disabling that pawn it actually hurt me quite a bit. I lost a bit of energy there. Alright. With only eight energy to go, I'm going to spend it all attacking right there. 
keep him hopefully on his heels a little bit. I'll be able to build another pawn here and attack right there. Now by building these pawns up here I'm actually kind of can't think of the word I'm looking for. I'm, I'm painting myself into a little bit of a corner because I'm going to have all these upgraded pawns back here that are not going to be uh, able to move away. Once you've upgraded a pawn all the way, that's when it's going to be able to finally move. Uh, and so until I'm able to actually move these pawns, he's coming in for an attack there, and I continue to want to spend all my energy that I have available on upgrading so I can get more and more energy. And now what I should probably do here is on the bottom go on the offensive. So if I actually, now I have this fully upgraded pawn, I'm able to move him. And again, these fully upgraded pawns are able to do as many actions as you have energy for in each turn. So then I'm also going to go ahead and upgrade right here. And I'm going to upgrade here and build here because that's going to get me more action. I should have let that fully upgraded pawn do that. But if I move him down here, I'm going to be able to... Oh yeah, I'm going to be fine. And going on the offensive like this, this pawn is a total powerhouse now because it only requires three energy to attack, one energy to disable. And disabling means that the pawn that you are attacking can't do anything next turn. It doesn't actually take any damage, but it won't be able to take any action on the next turn. So that's good and bad, is that it's still going to be around. And if um, he can, the, the enemy can use his pawns to disable your guy or attack your guy, then it's all kind of a all for naught. But the good thing is that a very small pawn can disable um, even a fully upgraded pawn. Whereas a very small pawn can attack a fully upgraded pawn, but that won't do a lot of damage. Alright, so let's see what else we want to do here now. We might as well, since we got the energy build right here, and I don't want to attack. I'm going to disable, like I say. So I've got this level 1 pawn uh, disabling this level 3 right now. And that's just really hurting him a little bit. Mm. Now I've got this disabled pawn right here, so I was saying that we're going to be going on the offensive and doing a lot of damage. Oops, hit the wrong button there. Uh, but at the moment, we are going to be struggling a little bit against some of these big guys. So we'll disable him right there. And then running low on energy. And I don't know why he didn't... He should have made absolutely certain to disable this pawn. I am now able to move into this position and with only three energy required, attack his home base. And that's it, game over. So as you can see, the enemy AI for the easy mode is not particularly smart, not particularly challenging. Um, nothing that I've done in this game on easy mode has been particularly difficult. But if we go back to the menu, uh, you can see there are lots of different levels, lots of different maps to play against. Uh, and then with three levels of difficulty, certainly worth a couple of dollars on the eShop. I've enjoyed it very much so far, and I'm going to continue to play. If you'd like to see more, if you'd like to see it on the higher difficulty levels, uh, I'm happy to do that as well. Um, and then if you want to see anything else in my Switch library, I'd love to hear about it. And the one thing we really are struggling with that we got to get down is, what are we going to call this show now that it's not just Let's Play Slay? But in any event, thanks for joining us. Have a nice evening.